hinder you, hinder you. Don't you let where you've been hinder you. Don't let what they've said hinder you, hinder you. Don't you let your past hinder you. You're a woman without limits. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. But I came to tell you, baby girl, your story is about to change. I said your story is about to change. I don't care how low you've gone. I know your story is about to change. The next Daughters of Zion meeting will be held on 30th April 2016 at JCC Parklands with Reverend Kathy Kuna from 1 p.m. The devil is a liar, so is his mother-in-law. How can you keep quiet when you were sleeping on the ground? Nobody saw you. Now that God has raised you, the devil wants you to shut up. The devil is a liar, so is his mother-in-law. I'm going to say it from the rooftops. Daughters of Zion, raising the standard among women. Hey! Hey hey the Woman Without Limits magazine April to June edition is out. It's bigger and better. Among the features, Feed Your Brain by Kate Kibara, Let's Get Naked by Dr. Kinyanjui, Manifestation of Gifts by Bishop Alan Kuna, Let's Talk Insurance by Boone Insurance, among others. Make sure you grab a copy today. To partner with The Woman Without Limits magazine, call the numbers on the screen. Good evening, viewers. You are welcome to Woman Without Limits. I'm Reverend Kathy Kuna. It's always such a delight to have you welcome us right where you're watching us from. And you know, Woman Without Limits has been about affecting lives. And want to thank you for all the feedback. Keep them coming. Call us, tweet us, you know, text us, and let us know how we truly are affecting your lives because that's what Woman Without Limits is all about. Now, you know we never disappoint. Today, my Lord, you better buckle your safety belt. We have an amazing, amazing man of God that has come all the way from the United States of America. His name is Bishop Marvin Winans. He is a known, renowned gospel artist, marvelous singer. Oh my God. And then he's come from a family of singers. And on top of that, he's a bishop to a powerful powerful ministry and on top of that he has so many titles which he's going to be telling us about would you welcome bishop marvin winans <laughs> how are you pastor Kathy? i'm very very good reverend Kathy, i'm sorry <laughs> reverend pastor that's all good. <laughs> it's great to be here thank you so much for coming kenya needs you kenya loves you oh and we're so delighted it's always a, a pleasure to go and um recognize that the word of God is true, that um, when he makes you a promise, he keeps it. Right. And I remember so well, my late pastor, Elder Stax, told us that if we would remain clean, that God would prove us to the world. Wow. And to sit in Africa, those words resonate even now. Wow. So it's been your dream for a long time that one day you will come to Africa. Oh, uh, ever since I was a, a little boy, I wanted to come to Africa. Wow. You know, I wanted to come, uh, just travel around the world because he's a great big God. Amen. And so we, uh, we were little boys and uh, grew up uh, together and just did not want to limit what God would do did not want to limit how God could use us. And so when you take the limits off of God, mm. when you really 
understand the far reaching arm of God and that he's so massive, he's so big, he, he uses the earth as his footstool. You're right. And so if you have a God that size, there's nothing you can't do. Mm. So here you are, born into a singing family. Yeah, um, <clears throat> we really didn't know that we were born into a singing family. Right. We were just born. Doctor. And uh, <laughs> the, the truth of the matter is my mother mm -hmm. and my father met in a choir when they were like, I think she might have been around 12 or 11 and he was 13. Oh my God. And they met because my, my grandmother on my father's side was in the choir. Hmm. And her mother, my grandmother on my mother's side, was in the choir. Well, my mother was in the choir because she played the piano right. and she could sing. My father was in the choir because he was mischievous and my grandmother didn't want to leave him at home alone. <laughs> and uh, he came to the choir rehearsal and uh, liked I the like girls. That. And uh, then he and my mother fell in love and uh, they were married. He was 19 and she was 17. What? When they got married? Yes. Oh my goodness. So he came <laughs> because he was mischievous, wanted to see what girls are be singing. Well, no, my mother didn't want to leave him at home because he would have got in trouble. Right. He would have been on the street doing something. Okay. And so uh, she brought him with her and he still ended could up getting trouble. Could he sing or he just, oh, she Lord. just brought him? Well, he could sing. My father was. My father could out sing all of his sons. Oh, yeah. My father was a tremendous singer. He, he started a quartet group called the Noble Heirs. Hmm. And he was good friends with uh, the late Sam Cooke. Hmm. Matter of fact, they would come over to the house. Uh, we lived up above our grandmother in a four family uh, housing unit. And Sam would come, and my in mother a, in a poor family housing unit. Well, in a four. Oh, four family. Oh, I thought you said poor family housing no, unit. Four. That four. that that would come okay. later. Mm -hmm. A four family housing unit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Sam's first wife was named Dolores, and my mother's name was Dolores. Wow. And they they really struck up a friendship, mm -hmm. and. Um, so they got married, and uh, then they had one child. Two years later, they had another child. Two years later, they had twins, of which I'm one of them. Oh, you're a twin? Yes, I'm a twin. Uh, one year later, they had another. Uh, two years after that, they had another. Um, and then one year after that, they had another. And that was seven boys. Right. Then two years after that, they had uh, the first girl, and that was Cece, that the was beloved, Cece, blessed, oh heaven-sent Cece. That will come to Kenya? Huh? That will come to Kenya? Oh, she's been to Kenya. She's been to Kenya? She's been to Kenya. Cece? Cece has been to Kenya. When? Oh, I don't know. But she's been here, and she... She, I know she's been there because she told me about the safari she went on. For real? That she was, so she didn't come to she Minister? Was, uh, I believe so. I don't think she came here for a vacation. She came and ministered in Kenya? This is Kenya. in Kenya years ago. And so I don't know where you were. I must have been maybe lost somewhere in the world. <laughs> because if I was in the kingdom, I would have known. You would have been, ah. <laughs> We and, love her terribly. Oh, they love her everywhere. Oh. And then after uh, Cece was born, then four years after that, my mother had another girl. And then three years after that, my mother had another girl. Wow. And uh, my father kept threatening that he wanted to have another son, but that was the end of that. <laughs> so uh, that's ten of That's you. ten. Right. Yeah. Wow. You're the what born of the ten? The best looking. 
Number what? Oh, oh, number. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yes, you are. Thank you, you know thank what? you, thank you. You, thank you absolutely are. Talk to me now, <laughs> Reverend Kay. No. Uh, number four. Number four. Yeah. Okay. I, was, I was the bonus baby. Wow. My mother was pregnant nine times and had ten children. And had ten children. I was the bonus. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you were the bonus? Yeah. Because of the twin. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's, that's so beautiful. Because, you know, that was before ultrasound. That was before they knew. And so after they, after they had Carvin, my twin brother, he was right. this big, fat, bub, bubbly uh, butterball of a baby. Yes. And uh, they were getting ready to finish doing what they were doing. The nurse said, oh, no, hold on, there's another one. So I would tell my mother I wasn't born according to the will of man, according to the will of flesh. It was but the will of was God. the will of God. You were hidden in there somewhere. Huh? And you said, I'm coming out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I snapped my fingers, but I did say I was coming out. Wow. That's, that was a mighty surprise. Yes. And yeah. beautiful, too. Yeah. Okay. So when did you all start singing? First and foremost, you said you didn't... Uh, you didn't want to sing? No, 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 no. I just said we didn't know that we, we sang. Mm -hmm. um, the first time I sang, it was my mother, because I knew my mother sang. We always had a piano in the house. And my mother and father, my father was over the young people at my great-grandfather's church. And my mother was one of the musicians. My father was also over the choir. And so they would rehearse. Oddly enough, they didn't rehearse in the church, they rehearsed in one another's homes. Ooh. So there were always people over our house, and they would be singing, and Daddy would teach them the parts, and, and you know, and it was a, it was about fellowship. Mm -hmm. And so, um, when the first time we sang, my eldest brother David, and then Ronald, and then Carvin and I, my mother got us together, and during the convocation at my great-grandfather's church, they would have Young People's Night and Sunshine Band where the little kids would perform and say speeches and do all of that. Right. Um, and my mother gathered, that, gathered us four together and taught us some songs. And we, it was a, I, I remember the songs. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Jesus Loves Me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Jesus oh, wow. loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand upon the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. God's word never fails, never fails, never fails. God's word never fails. No, no, no. Do you know what time it is? It's time to serve the Lord. God has said a meeting time we all can't afford. Daytime, night, night, dark time, light time. Any time's the right time to serve the Lord. Wow. And that was our, that was our. How you began. All the people just clapped. Oh. And the name of our group was uh, Elder Winan's great grandchildren. Oh. You know, that's how we were introduced. Right. This is Elder Winan's great grandchildren. And then we sang that, and then she taught us another song. The next year, we sung uh, Long As I Got King Jesus. And oh, when we sung that, it was over. How does it go? Uh, it says, uh, I've been lied on, lied on, cheated, cheated, talked about, the mistreated, mistreated, butte, butte, scorned, scorned, talked about, talked about your ass, you're born to been up, up, down, down, level, level to the ground. Now this song required harmonies, so now right. we're singing harmony. Right. Then Carvin would say, long as I got King Jesus, Ronald, long as I got King Jesus. Oh, no, right. that was... Me, long as I got King Jesus. Then Ronald would say, long, long, long as I got him, don't need nobody else. Yeah. I don't need, don't need nobody else. Oh. Anyway, man, after we sang that, then my father looked at us and said, I got a quartet. <laughs> and that was then. <laughs> Daddy took us over. Wow. And started to raise you? We had to sing 
every day. It was, he, was, he was brutal. He would make us sing. We're sitting there watching television, right when the, the cops getting ready to catch the robbers. Daddy would come in. <laughs> He said, cut that foolishness off. Come on in there and sing. We had to get up. And we had to get up and come in the living room. And he'd take his guitar. And he said, oh, all just done stormy banks. We had to come in with our harmony. He really taught us harmony. He really taught us to be able to hear and just trained us over every, this was constant. Mm. Then uh, when I turned 12, uh, when I got, when I was 11, the Lord saved me. And what? when I turned 12, um, we had always sang, there was always a piano, we was always pecking on right. something. Right. But uh, the Lord taught me how to play the piano. So when you were 11 years old, you gave your life to the Lord? Oh, I got to say. When I, yeah. and I turned 12 the next week, and I was 12 when he baptized me in the Holy Ghost. And I gave my life to him, and he would give me songs. And uh, I uh, started writing, mm -hmm. and uh, Ronald <clears throat> was, was with me because Ronald played. I played, and then we went to church all the time. Ronald and I got saved together in the same revival, and he was two years older than I. And um, so we formulated a group of young people at the church, girls and boys, and we had about maybe nine, ten of us, and we just started singing songs that we had written. And then the girls weren't serious. They wanted to go shopping, and, <laughs> and the group sort of evolved. Uh, yeah. Carvin wasn't singing with us. Michael was Michael was in a totally different group mm -hmm. uh, because Ronald took the younger ones, Michael, Daniel, BB, CC, and formed a group called Winans Part Two. Okay. Our group was the Testimonial Singers, and their group was Winans Part Two. Right. And so I would write songs and I would teach them the songs. Uh, and so it just kept growing. Howard Smith was in our group. He went off to sing with uh, Andre Crouch. The, if you remember, those of you that remember the song, uh, We Are Not Ashamed of the Gospel of Jesus. We yes. are not ashamed. Yeah. That's Howard Smith. And he was in our group. And uh, when he left to go with Andre, then uh, Daddy said that we would take Michael out of part two because I wanted B.B. But he said, no, nope, take Michael. And uh, so you do what your parents say. <laughs> and I took Michael. And, and then we went to California. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Howard introduced us to Andre. And we went to California unannounced uh, to make our first record. And... Uh, we sang, the question is, will I ever leave you? Aww. And uh, Andre changed our name to the Winans, and uh, there you go. Andre Crouch, he's the one that changed your name. Yeah, he came and he said, what's a, what's a testimonial singer? You speak like him. <laughs> and my father was there, he said, y'all Winans, yeah. so y'all ought to be the Winans. <laughs> and my daddy said, my God. Yeah. Yeah, he was so excited about it. And, uh, and that, that's how we became the wines. Right. Introducing the wines. Right. So now with your parents singing, <clears throat> and then you singing, and then tell me, in growing up, were you buddies, were you friends, were you tight as siblings? Oh, absolutely. We're, Did you fight? We're, oh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Uh, we just didn't let Daddy know. Um <laughs> We, 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 we're tight right now. Right. Yeah, it never changed. Wow. My father instilled family. He would tell us all the time, y'all ain't half brothers, y'all full brothers. You know? And uh, y'all got to be brothers. And yeah. so we, that's all we know. That's mm -hmm. all we know is how to help one another. Um, and the pecking order was real. Mm -hmm. If mom and daddy was not in, at the house because they worked, uh, then 
David was in charge, and we had to do what David said. Mm -hmm. And if David wasn't in the house, Ronald was in charge. He was kind of cruel. <laughs> and uh, then if, <laughs> if Ronald wasn't in the house, then Carvin was in charge, but I didn't let that happen. I, I, I sort of jumped over Carvin. And, and so forth and so on. And yeah. so we had to, we had to honor each other. We had to pay because we could so get in trouble. you didn't break ranks? I broke rank with, I broke rank with uh, Carvin. He was That's my twin. That's your twin. That's really not breaking. Okay. <laughs> well, no, we did not break ranks. To this day, my baby sister, uh, Debbie, she tells our children what to do because she couldn't tell us what to do. She was the baby, so she's tight with all of our kids, and yeah. she calls them, and they yeah. tell, y'all got to do this, yeah. and they obey their Auntie wow. Debbie, wow. because she couldn't tell anybody what to do. There were nine people over her, right? and uh, so, no, we, we uh, I remember I was <coughs> doing a record with Cece. We did, uh, she wanted to do a song that I'd written, Bring Back the Days of Yay and Nay. And when you were the one play, that wrote it? I wrote it, and actually that was the first Grammy that, that I won for that song, mm -hmm. The Wine and Sang It. So um, we went in the studio, and she sung her part, and I said, and we were listening back, and I said, no, nah, Cece, that's not good. You need to do that over, uh, but do it this way. And I showed her, and she said, okay, and went back to do it. And, met, and the, the producer that was in the studio hit the button and said, Oh, no. I said, what? She said, and she started saying, stop playing. Just go on and do the thing. She said, he said, Marvin, could you stay down here all the time? In all the years I produced her, she's never done what I said. She always argues with me and tells me I can't do it. I said, oh, you don't understand. She's been doing what I've said all her all life. Her life. <laughs> yeah, that she doesn't know anything else. Wow. So that the pecking order was real. The pecking order was really oh. good. I don't know who I came for, but I came to tell you, baby girl, your story is about to change. I said your story is about to change. I don't care how low you've gone. I know your story is about to change. The next Daughters of Zion meeting will be held on 30th April 2016 at JCC Parklands with Reverend Kathy Kuna from 1 p.m. The devil is a liar, so is his mother-in-law. How can you keep quiet when you are sleeping on the ground? Nobody saw you. Now that God has raised you, the devil wants you to shut up. That devil is a liar, so is his mother-in-law. I'm going to say it from the rooftops. Daughters of Zion, raising the standard among women. Hi! 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 The Woman Without Limits magazine April to June edition is out. It's bigger and better. Among the features, Feed Your Brain by Kate Kibara, Let's Get Naked by Dr. Kinyanjui, Manifestation of Gifts by Bishop Alan Kuna, Let's Talk Insurance by Boone Insurance, among others. Make sure you grab a copy today. To partner with The Woman Without Limits magazine, call the numbers on the screen. Oh yeah. So you never disobeyed your parents. You never. Oh, well, I can't. You never can't. veered off. I, I I can't say that. Please uh, but say it. I, 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 Please I, 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 can't, say I can't. I can't let Kenya have all of the information. No, but we want to know. Your humor. Oh, oh! I, I please, I, I disobeyed my parents. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One of the biggest gaffes of my life was disobeying my parents. Yeah. But um, never went too far uh, because I got saved when I was eleven. You have to understand. And uh, but uh, our parents were our examples, mm -hmm. and that's that's the reason I try oh, to tell that's people. So no, no, it it is. Yeah. It is very powerful. Because the Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they are grown, they will not depart from you. It's 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 true. Yeah. Uh, and my father would say it like this: He say the Bible say train up a child in the way he should go, not the way he want to go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, there's it's on YouTube, right. but there's a a, a a YouTube video of my dad when we did the Oprah show, mm -hmm. and Oprah asks him. Uh, how did you uh, 
raise 10 kids. I know. He said, Oprah, I never gave him a nickel or dime to go to nobody's show. I believe what the Bible says. If you do, and, and you could see yeah. the, and we had fun with our father. Wow. He, he was, when he wanted to be a clown. Right. Okay. He was. Oh, so Lord. you did take after him. <laughs> Pretty good, Reverend Kathy. Uh, yeah. He, yeah, he was he was a delightful man, and uh, uh, even when my mother was mad at him, I remember I would go over after I was grown and had kids, and we would just sit and talk, and I would stir up stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, "Mama, why did you put up with that?" And he just and he said something, and she went to laughing, and and she said. Right there, see, he think he could make me laugh, and that yeah. would, and he would make her laugh. Oh, really? And uh, yeah, so wow. they were married fifty six years before he passed, fifty six and a half years. Whoa! So he passed at what age? Seventy four, a week before he would have been seventy five. Oh, yeah. what ailed him? <sighs> was he sick? He 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 was, but. I tell this very, very sacredly. Uh, my father, I, I, I found a CD of, uh, someone had given me actually, a CD of Sam Cooke and the Davis sisters and all of these classic gospel artists in America that my father knew personally from Lou Rawls to Johnny Taylor, to I mean, when we went to California to do the album, uh, my father went into this little supply store which was next door to the studio, and he saw Lou Rawls, and uh, he said, Louis, and he turned around, how you doing? He said, you don't know me, I'm Skippy. And he started naming it, night you had a 42 so-and-so and you drove this car to Chicago and we went to, and Lou Rawls was taken back, and man, when he, you know, because Lou Rawls would do the uh, uh, telethon for uh, college, for black colleges and universities, mm -hmm. and he had us on it, and our father went with us, and they just be renewed old friendship. But um, I brought this CD over to his house late one night. It was late. And they were in the bed. I woke him up. And uh, said, y'all got to hear this. And they came and heard it. And while he was sitting there listening, my father folded his arms and said, I miss the saints. 
I want to go see my mama. He said that. He said that. And so my mother, I said, Mama, how long daddy been saying that? She said, she said, say what? He want to, he miss his mama. He want to go see his mama. He missed the saints. He, she didn't hear him. She said, I don't know. That next week he had a stroke. And uh, I would talk to him. He, and the doctors came and said, because of how his stroke was, they said he'll never regain memory. And uh, he remembered everybody. And we all came in and he called their names. And, and the doctor came in when he was going to release him from the hospital and said, you have made me believe. He said, oh, doc, doc. Oh. You know, it is, I, I could go on and on. Um, um, but I, I don't know, you know, he just, he just wanted to, to leave. To, to, yeah. He just wanted to leave. I mean, he was laying in the uh, ICU mm -hmm. and I was the only one in there. Mm -hmm. And I said, Daddy, Daddy, and he was non-responsive. He just laid there, you know. I said, Daddy, wouldn't say anything. Went over there by him, touched him. And then it hit me because my father would always say, God is a wonder. Wow. And uh, so I, I, I stood there by myself, and I walked over to the corner of ICU, and I said, Lord, I'm going to see if this works. Mm -hmm. And I stood there and waited till everything was quiet, and then I said, he's a wonder. And Daddy said, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I said, all right, I'm, this, this, is, uh, this is real. Is that part of the, the reason why Sissy sang, he's a wonder? He, the, the, absolutely. You're, 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 you're my sister. Mm. You are just like blood sister Yes, to me. yes, yes. And, and, and right now, you know, our family, our, yes, our Winans family, because yes. I'm the 11th Winans, <laughs> um, our family has gone through a, 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 a time of crisis where the patriarch of the family, uh, uh, Pop Winans, okay. Elder David Winans, has been going through a series of physical challenges. Yes. Talk about that for a second. Our, our father, and when I say our, I mean yours as well. He has suffered, since September, he suffered four heart attacks. Four heart attacks. And what's amazing is, you know, we all know that if he leaves tomorrow, everything is still all right. Amen. <laughs> Actually, I think that's what he's trying to do, but we're binding that. <laughs> But, but I've learned more from him in the hospital. Donnie, even when he's unconscious, he's worshiping. They take him down to get uh, x-rays and all you hear is, oh, ba 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 ha sha da di e ke ma na di o so ko ba. Glory, 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 glory. Until, until my brother Marvin had to tell the nurse, don't be afraid, just say, just say amen. amen. Just say praise God. <laughs> just say praise God. And the thing I got from that, if he can praise them like that, some of us are sitting up here and ain't nothing wrong with us. And somebody got to beg you to praise God. But he taught us a long time ago that God inhabits the praises of his people. And the one thing I learned from him is that if I praise God the way he deserves to be praised, God will always sit down in my situation. Yes, 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 yes. You don't have to look for him when you praise him. Yes, yes. Because it brings him to him. So he's, he's doing good. He's doing good. He's still praising him. We're getting to take him home next week. Amen. I thank God for all the prayers. The prayers of the righteous Amen. availeth much. Yes, God. Yes, God. So just keep praying for him, you know. Yes. One day he told somebody, look, I'm ready to go home. We said, and Par Marvin said, well, we ain't ready for you to go home yet. <laughs> but, but he's just, he loves God. Yeah. And that's the thing about loving God. When you're a saint, you can't lose. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand that? You can't lose. When you love God and you praise him and you give him everything, you can't lose. I, I, you know, I was up at the hospital when, when you and y'all, when y'all were there. Mm -hmm. And I went in the room and, and me and your niece, uh, Joy, and he was, you know, unconscious. Mm -hmm. And they're all hooked up with all the stuff. Mm -hmm. And we're breathing like this. And I got down, I laid hands on him. Hey, and I oh. prayed. And I got in his ear and said, wonderful Jesus. He said, wonderful. <laughs> now see, that, that, that's when you know you've got that relationship that's with right. God. That's that you don't have to worry about it, conscious or unconscious. Right. It's still a continuous praise. Continuous praise. That's what I, I will bless the Lord at all, all times. Time. Listen to what I'm telling. 
you gotta you gotta really take into account what all times means i will bless him at all times at the pinnacle of my health i will bless him at all times even in the depth of my sickness i will bless him at all times and if i do so his praise will continuously yes, That's right. be in my be mouth. In my mouth. Right. Do I have any praises in this room? Yes, no amen. matter what I'm hit with, no matter what, I will bless God. Got to bless God. Hallelujah. Got to bless God. And that, and your, your father taught us he comes every year to our church. Uh-huh. And he used to say that if you praise him, he'll extend your days. <laughs> my That's God. Him. That's he said if you praise him. <laughs> He going to extend your that's days. It, that's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and that's been my motto. If I praise him, I praise him. he will extend my yes, days. He so I've the been place. in the hospital three, four times in the last month and a half. Mm. But it's my praise yes. that has caused me to overcome everything that came to overcome me. Everything. everything. You better hear what I'm telling you. That's right. Oh, I feel like preaching and I don't have time. Yeah, 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 yeah. The reason she said that <laughs> was because that's what that was. That was my father's cliche he would always he would get up preach he would talk he was a worshiper he matter of fact the first time i came to to africa uh not the first time i came to africa but the first time i came to preach in africa was in uh lagos nigeria and uh, when i went home i said daddy next time i go to nigeria you going with me because i met all your cousins they all there (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and um, and I, I said that because in Africa, the men are the worshipers. Wow. They lead it. They they run to the front. They're, in America, the men kind of laid back. My father was never laid back. My father was always leading, shouting, dancing, mm-hmm. and um, and so that was his word. He's a wonder. And uh, so when Cece did that song. Uh, that that little part. He's a wonder. He's, He's a wonder. Man. Yeah. He's a mighty <laughs> God. That was for my father. Oh. Yeah. So was that after he went? No, no, no. He before? was much alive. Was oh, he was so proud of that. We went on tour. He'd be at the side. He's a wonder. <laughs> He's a wonder. He, no, that was. He was very much alive. When so she you did, did go on tours with your parents? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All over the states. All over the all over the world. We were in Europe. Mm. We were everywhere but Africa. Uh, we, <laughs> we were in Switzerland, German, France, uh, England, uh, yeah, Did they, when uh, Sweden. You, yeah. yeah. Oh, when you started, did you all know that this was going to come out? Absolutely not. Uh, we struggled most, most of our lives. After I became grown and a parent, uh, I, I discovered that we were poor. We, we were quite poor. Uh, we lived... Uh, for a while in uh, Parkside Projects in Detroit. Um, and uh, it was all God. It was all God. Uh, but that's what we had. We sang. We sang when Mama put us all in the car to go to the mall, to, to the store. We sang. When we sit in the car waiting on them to come out of the store, we sang uh, when we were going to church, and I would I would make up these songs. Carvin, uh, Ronald would make up songs. David, we would make up songs, and we would teach the harmonies. And then, as the kids came on, we made them sing, and uh, that's what we did. We would we would we would hold whatever article we had. We would have our own shows at our house, and then at the end of the show. We would act like we had the Grammys, and we would pick who won the Grammy. What? And it depended on who was the host. Like, if I hosted, I definitely was going to win. And, uh, you know, if Ronald hosted, he was going to win. We would make up these things, and and we would, uh, and the winner is, and we act like we had paper. Oh, my God, Marvin (laughs) Winans. And then we would probably jump on the person. You know, it was it was it was crazy. Oh and then you had to make your speech. Yeah. And so we stood in front of the mirror. I would like to thank and, you know, we were all cracking up. And uh, you go you do the whole shebang. We would do the uh, the whole shebang. Yeah. And uh that's how we entertained ourselves. Wow. And uh it was it was funny, so 
in 1985 mm-hmm. when I actually won a Grammy. That's why I wanted to ask you when now it actualized and you won the Grammy. I was speechless. I was speechless. Um, the Winans had been nominated three times mm-hmm. and we had lost two. Um, and so we took our spiritual mother, Mother Boyd, to the Grammys with us. Sent a limousine to pick her up. And we sat, she sat right next to me. And um, wow. it, was, it, was, it was wonderful. And, and then they announced. And I went up on stage. It was for the best performance uh, gospel by an artist, right? Uh, a solo artist. And they said, the winner is Marvin White, let's bring back the days of yeah and nay. Hmm. I couldn't believe it. I went up on stage and I, I really didn't say anything. After all that playing in the living room, yeah. giving the large speeches, <laughs> I had nothing to say. And I went off to the side and they said, stay here because you're nominated in the next category. And it was for best uh, performance by a duo or group, oh. and it was, and the winner is the Winans for tomorrow. And then the, my three other brothers came up on stage, and I came back out, mm. and uh, BB ran up on stage, even though he wasn't in our group. Uh, he's always wanted to be in our group. He but wanted to be. I'm sure. Is, is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so. Uh, but you wanted him in the beginning. Then in your the beginning, said no. no, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, if that, that had happened, there probably wouldn't have been a BB and CC. So, wow. um, he came up on stage, and my group looked to me because I did all of the talking, and I was speechless. And so we won the Grammy, mm-hmm. and I'm walking off stage. My family looked at me because I did all the talking, and I was speechless, so Carvin went to talking. 
and we walked off stage. And while I'm walking off stage, the Holy Spirit speaks to me a very stern way. I mean, he just shouted it in my spirit. He said, I didn't call you to win Grammys. I called you to win souls. That was it. I got it back. I was talking and been talking ever since. What? Yeah. He said, I called you to win souls. So you don't settle for that. Oh, no, you don't. So that's, that's way beneath. What? I don't know who I came for, but I came to tell you, baby girl, your story is about to change. I said your story is about to change. I don't care how low you've gone. I know your story is about to change. The next Daughters of Zion meeting will be held on 30th April 2016 at JCC Parklands with Reverend Kathy Kuna from 1 p.m. The devil is a liar, so is his mother-in-law. How can you keep quiet when you are sleeping on the ground? Nobody saw you. Now that God has raised you, the devil wants you to shut up. The devil is a liar, so is his mother-in-law. I'm going to say it from the rooftops. Daughters of Zion, raising the standard among women. Hey! Hey -ya! Hey -ya! The Woman Without Limits magazine April to June edition is out. It's bigger and better. Among the features, Feed Your Brain by Kate Kibara, Let's Get Naked by Dr. Kinyanjui, Manifestation of Gifts by Bishop Alan Kuna, Let's Talk Insurance by Boone Insurance, among others. Make sure you grab a copy today. To partner with The Woman Without Limits magazine, call the numbers on the screen. Don't pass me by. 